Okay. All right. So let's talk about question number three. Uh, Thomas Aquinas and what he said about natural law. So question number three on your paper says, what is the role of natural law in Catholic moral theology? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you um, the first bullet point, and then you can write it down, and then we'll talk about it. Okay? And hopefully you might remember this from looking at the article yesterday. Okay? You want me to hit the light? Is that going to help? Okay. We'll hit one up. Thomas Aquinas said natural law comes from God. In fact, that would have been one of the first questions that you needed to answer. All right, where does natural law come from? It comes from God. Uh, through his creation, okay? The fact that God created the world and everything in it and everybody, that law governs everything. He is the creator. Because he's the creator, he gets to set the rules, so to speak, that govern everything. Whether you're talking about that, you know, nature, you know, the way our planet works and our environment works, uh, to how humans operate. Okay, so natural law comes from God. Now, I know you probably wouldn't have remembered this, but I want to use the specific language that Thomas uses in his writings. He says humans are imprinted, notice that's in quotation marks there, or it's kind of, it's kind of set off, uh, humans are imprinted with a natural end and purpose. Okay, so that goes along with that answer there. Human beings are imprinted with a natural end or purpose. Those are the actual words that he uses. Now, when you see that word imprinted, you almost kind of get a visual image. What do you kind of think of when you see that word imprinted, like imprinted upon? Sienna? Yeah. That's exactly what I, the first thing that comes to my mind, it's like being stamped, okay? Like you get a stamp on your hand. Uh, or I even think of like maybe a product, like a tool or a computer or something that comes from the factory and it's got the, the you know, that stamp of approval, you know, inspected by number five or, or whatever, okay? It's almost kind of like when, as human beings, God makes us and he, he kind of stamps us with a purpose. In other words, we were made for a reason and we're called to kind of, uh, pursue that, okay? So human beings, this gets back to the idea that there is a moral code. There is truth, and we need to seek it, okay? We're not just randomly created and then just put out there and it's like, well, whatever, okay? We are called to be a certain way, okay? So think of it almost like something that comes from the factory, it's produced, and it has a, a, a function, okay? Um, it's just like if you buy uh, you know, some wand equipment or a computer or, or uh, kitchen appliance or whatever, you know, usually what does it come with when you buy it? It comes with an instruction manual, okay? Now, I know every time I get something, I open those manuals and they're like in five different languages and they're upside down and you got to, and I'm like trying to figure out how to read them and usually I end up just saying, you know what, I hope this thing works because those instructions are not helping me, you know? Um, but God has made us kind of like that and we're made to operate a certain way. I kind of wonder sometimes that maybe God when he makes us, is like, I hope this works out. I hope they live like they're supposed to. Of course, the difference is, is that God gives us freedom. So even though we do have a natural end and purpose, uh, it's up to us to follow that. If we choose not to follow it, then you know that's where the free will comes in. Okay? All right, and then the last thing that I want to mention, and I don't know if you would have, if you can remember this from two days ago, but uh, one of your questions was, what did Thomas Aquinas say is kind of the universal rule for all people. And when you get down to this, what is our purpose? What is our end? What are we supposed to do? Can anybody, I know you might not be able to do this because you don't have it in front of you, but you remember he had like a little saying. He had like a little axiom, a wise saying. Anybody remember any part of it at all? It was one of the questions that you had to answer on your uh, questions. He said, for any human being, good is to be done there was a second part. So you have it? Very good. Yeah. Good is to be done and evil avoided. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and give that to you. It's in yellow. So if you could add that. And I don't know if you could fit it into your little cloud for Thomas Aquinas or if you want to put it in number three. It doesn't matter to me. But that, that little saying there, good is to be done and pursued and evil avoided. We're called to do good. And we should try to avoid evil. 
So if you could summarize the Summa, okay, his, his masterpiece of theology, uh, the message for the Christian is, this is what you should try to do with your life. Always try to do good and try to avoid evil. Now, of course, easier said than done, but that's the essence of it. You figure out what is good and, and what's wrong, and you try to go the right way. Okay? So, I mean, that really does kind of underline exactly what Thomas Aquinas teaches. Okay? So our look at morality is going to always try to pursue what that says right there. Okay? All right, did everybody get that on number three? Okay, all right, that's what I wanted you to have on that. Okay, it's a good little summary there. Okay, so we're going to stop for just a moment.